There are some insanely new powerful weapon skills in Shadow of the Earth Tree that can break an enemy's poise in one hit and just look extremely cool. Today we're going to cover some of these best new Ashes of War. Let's go! Let me know any you found in the comments down below. We'll start with one of the early ones you can get, and that is the Savage Iron Claws. Now, the Iron Claws is a classic from the base game, but the Savage Iron Claws is essentially the same thing, except you get an additional input. Now, that additional input is like, doubling the amount of damage you would do from this hit you put this on a like a great sword you know i'm using a great katana in this footage here any like massive weapon and you just deal so much damage from not only that initial hit but then you get that follow-up hit as well you essentially like one shot enemies with this attack basically most of the way through the dlc and then obviously back in the base game as well it does fantastic poise damage to like break enemy stances if it doesn't kill them because of the massive hit that it does too and it's definitely one of my new personal favorites that have been been added. I was never really a massive fan of like the original one, like it obviously had its place in the game as well, but I'm really digging this one. It's one of the first that I actually found in the DLC and I put it on the Great Katana and was like, ah, this is fantastic. Like I'm using a cold Great Katana here, not only for the blood loss, but also like the frostbite buildup, which does happen pretty fast because of the, the hits that we are getting with that additional frostbite buildup here. Now, if you want to get the Savage Iron Claws, it's actually super easy to get, right? You can get it straight at the start of the DLC near the three path cross side of the race if you essentially just like head towards like the northish like hugging the wall you'll basically run into it up there where you can find it at like a small camp and sort of overlooking like the lake with the dragon in it's very easy to find early in the dlc if you haven't found it next we have wing stance everyone's favorite from all of the previews now this will pull your weapon out to the side and then the normal like attack does trigger like a fast like rapid three strike combination and the strong attack you like leap in the air and then like land and do like a thrusting animation. Now this is only usable on light great swords. So you've got a limited amount of options that you can actually use for this Ash of War. Obviously the Milady is probably the one that you want to use. And funnily enough, this is actually found near the Milady. But I actually really like the wing stance. Like the rapid combination is perfect if you wanted to say combo with any of those talismans that buff your attack after consecutive hits, like the wing sword insignia, Millicent's prosthetic, all those talismans. But also the new Rolana's cameo talisman that gives you a buff when you assume a stance for a certain period of time will actually work with this stance as well because it is a stance right so when you pull your weapon out to the side if you hold it there for a couple of seconds you'll get an attack buff when you do follow up with these attacks so there's perfect combinations that you can use with the wing stance as well you can infuse this with all sorts of things that if you want to change the ash of war to like add frostbite or magic damage whatever like you wanted to add with that as well and i do really like the wing stance it just looks cool as well which is i think is always fun with the ashes of war now if you want to get the wing stance it comes from castle ensis inside a chest now just before the castle lord's chamber side of grace instead of going towards the castle lord's chamber if you go back the other way you'll be able to jump off like the castle there and then there's like a little tower that you can climb up and inside that chest is where you will find the wing stance blink bolt is one that grew on me after time so what's essentially what this does is it infuses you with lightning and you like charge forward for like a small window right it does a ton a little bit of damage and it didn't i was sort of like oh yeah this is this is okay right now what grew on me about this is combining it with things like in this footage i'm using great blade phallics here so you can sort of use it as a gap closer to like trigger that effect but also i've noticed as well that you can follow up with like an attack immediately after it jumps you forward so using the great katana again as an example here that's like lightning infused i'm using it to like gap close and then immediately attack as soon as like i land and then because i'm combining it with like great blade phallics like it's getting that damage off as well but you could combine it with like other spells or incantations that like trigger when you get like close to enemy or something like because you could then like set off a spell that has like a delayed effect and then charge in hit them with your own effect and then that attack hits them as well so you've got the benefits from that so it did grow on me a little bit now you can put this on any melee armaments like whatsoever you can put this on anything which is i think was one of the benefits that is going for it and it does initially provide the lightning affinity but you can put like sacred or any of the basic ones on it as well this one is a little tricky to find now it comes in the fog rift catacombs which is sort of to like 
the east-ish of Castle Ensis, like rather than entering from the castle front ruins, if you head up that way, there's like a fog area. If you follow that all the way through, you'll find the catacombs. Now in the catacombs here, when there is the third spike dropper where there's like one of those death sorcerers at the other end, if you get all the way to where he is standing and stand on that location, when the spike dropper drops, there is actually like a little platform that you can enter and then you'll be able to climb all the way to the top there. Then there's a chest up the top there that has this ash of war in it. So you'll be able to grab it from the fog rift catacombs. Rolling Sparks is a new one for all of the perfumers out there. Now, what this does is it triggers like a massive explosion from the perfume bottle that gives you a little bit more range as a perfumer if you are going that route. And the other benefit here is that the type of damage it does is dependent on the perfume bottle you are using it with, right? In this footage, I'm using it with a fire perfume bottle. So it does fire damage, but it will change depending on the perfume bottle that you put it in. And it only can be used with the perfume bottles because, you know, it is specifically for them. And I think the perfume bottles are a little weak, I think overall. And this gives you a little bit more value, especially because it does stagger them a bit as well. Like with that explosion effect does go off. And I think that's one of the weakest parts about the perfume bottles is that you sort of just like throwing smoke at them and then, you know, they take that damage, what have you, but they often will just follow up with attacks and it's hard to combo things together when you're not staggering enemies in any way and this gives you a bit more range gives you a bit more stagger and you can obviously knock enemies down and follow up with critical hits with this as well in order to get this one it's a little bit trickier in that it is a little bit further in the game it's just before shadow keep in those like camps just before the keep itself the one to the southeast is where there's some perfumers there now it's above those perfumers it's like a flying scarab that you'll need to look up for knock it down and actually kill it and then you get the rolling sparks Ash of War. The next is one of the coolest ones or looking ones in the game, and that's the aspect of the crucible wings. Now, this is obviously a crucible aspect, and essentially what you do is you jump up in the air, get that pair of wings that the crucible knights did to you all throughout the base game. Then you have a spinning attack that you do use if you have a twin blade or a piercing attack if you use any other weapon, right? Like you would remember this attack from the base game from fighting all of those crucible knights when they destroy you with this attack, but essentially now you can do it to them. Now, I really like this with a twin blade because because of like the additional swings that you do with this. Now I'm just using like a basic twin blade here. So the damage isn't like fantastic, but you can sort of get the idea of what it would be like, but you've also got the other option if you wanted to say, put it on a great katana or any of those other sort of weapons and just use that piercing initial attack as well. This can be infused with lightning or sacred affinity. So it is perfect for any faith builds, like fitting that crucible knight sort of role play setup. Now this comes from the Ford of Reprimand. You'll need to defeat the black knight entered there and he will drop this Ash of War. You can get here before going through Castle Ensis, like you can go a back way, but like e either way, right? You need to get to the Fort of Reprimand, which is sort of to the west-ish, like after the Castle Ensis, and it is close to the Shadow Keep as well. Flame Skewer in the wreaths the armament with flame and assumes a low stance before skewering the enemy in a single motion, and you can follow up with a strong attack to deal a follow-up flame attack. So similar to like Flaming Strike, where you would like throw that puff of smoke and then like light your weapon with fire this is a different version but specifically for piercing weapons that now you like skewer the enemy and then you can follow up with a flame attack as well but it will leave your weapon infused with flame for a period of time afterwards plus like you can put like flame art or flame or anything on the weapon as well now this is usable with any medium or large armaments capable of thrusting so i think your you know your spears your twin blades all that good stuff and what's really great about this is again it's that poise damage that it does build up like i've noticed when I've been tinkering with this that it basically takes two of these like stab skewers to like knock down most basic enemies to follow up with critical hits which has been really valuable. I always appreciate when we get a lot of these unique Ash of Wars that are like specific to certain damage types like flame or lightning or anything like we've covered on this list. I do hope we get some more magic and cold ones as there's in heaps of those in the DLC that I have found so far but if you have found them let me know in the comments down below and where you found them but this is one of my favorite ones from the DLC. Anyway now this comes from the NPC invader fire knight Colleen. the second time he invades you which is just after castle ensis he will invade you at the church of the crusade there and you'll need to defeat him and he will drop this ash of war now that is southwestish of the shadow keep you probably will see that church as soon as you leave castle ensis sort of to the west from there so you will notice it but you need to go there and defeat him and he'll drop this ash of war but let me know any i've missed in the comments down below thank you guys for watching this video till the end thank you to our members for supporting the channel my name is norza and i hope you have a great day.